my worst gigs were always when I first started because I didn't know any better. And totally. You know, would you have anything from the early days of like now looking back, you're like, what was I thinking? Oh yeah. I mean, I took any gig. I took a gig once upstate and it was like a five hour drive and me and three guys got drunk on the way up and we get there. It was in Minerva, New York. And it was so rural that, that uh, cell phones didn't work. And it was in a biker bar. And, uh, you know, the guy was like, all right, you just got to fill. It was three of us. And he's like, you got to do an hour and a half. And I probably had like four minutes to my name. That was good. And plus, you know, I'm living in New York. So it's a bunch of like, I like gays, you know, gay guys are fun and all this, you know, liberal shit. Yeah. And uh, they were not having it. And, you know, I'm, I'm bombing within two minutes and I have 28 minutes to go. They, I can tell they're going to hate all my material. So I'm trying to riff. And finally, they hate us. The whole thing, we're standing on a pool table, by the way. We finish the night. Everybody does their half hour. Everybody eats shit and they hate us. And we walk up to the bar and the bartender goes, that wasn't enough time. And we're like, hey, we did at least a half hour each. And uh, he's like, well, my, my audience wants more and I'm paying you and I'm telling you, you need to do more time. And the guy who got the gig was like, dude, you don't get comedy. You know, right. you do an hour and a half, it's over. Like, this, this is, you paid for it, we gave it to you and that's it. And plus, we did our act. We can't go back up there. They hate us and we're done. We're out of material. Right. And he's like, well, you better get back up there. And he put a gun on the bar. He put a shotgun on the bar. And we were like, that's let's hit it baby let's get back up there so we went back up and did more time but uh we slept there too i remember we got so drunk we had to sleep in the back and they had some cabins and uh, we almost got in, like a fist fight with one of the guys and it was a rough rough gig you'll, you'll never learn how to deal with that if you don't experience it like bill burr is probably one of the better comics and he can handle any um, any any moment i mean look at fucking philly the arena booed him and he handled that beautifully yeah. So how many hell gigs did he go through to get to that, you know? Yeah, and which which kind of made him, you know? Like yes, it, yes. It sealed the deal for him, that he was not to be messed with and that he was, like, legit. Right. Like, as a comic, doing sets and writing, that's like hitting the punching bag. But until you go get your ass kicked by a crowd, you'll never know what it's like to be in a real fight, like, because you need the actual guy swinging at you. You know, you can do the writing all day, but you need the guy swinging at your face to know when to duck. Yeah, that's a great uh, way to put that. Sometimes you still get some shows that you don't see coming. Like, for me, some of the worst bombs are, like, when things are going really well. And then all of <laughs> and you're just like, this is great. I'm so funny. This is why I got into this business. Of course I'll be famous. And then out of nowhere, you get the left hook, and it completely just knocks you off your pedestal. Do you have any of those where like you're riding high or you're, you're far enough into your career where you're like, I got this. And then they pull the rug out from you. Uh, well, well, two things. One, um, I've had the thing where I was killing so hard and I had like great momentum. And then I, then the lady heckled me and I said something so mean that they turned on me. I was at the, uh, Hartford funny bone and oh, there was a, it was, you know, it was like half full, maybe, maybe it was probably a third full. And I'm, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of coasting. Like I'm, I'm coasting well on that. Like, I don't give a fuck. Look, it's a third full. I'm at the heart for funny bone. It's the third show on a Saturday. I don't give a shit about you. You don't give a shit about me. And I had that, I don't give a shit confidence. You know that when, when you don't truly don't care about the show, you're really in your, your best element. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I was in, you know, I wasn't having the best set of my life, but I didn't give a fuck, and it showed, and I think it was working. So uh, I was kind of doing well, and I was feeling good about it, and this table in the front row kept fucking with me, and it was a fat guy, like a really fat, obese, nerdy guy, and it was a, a handicapped chick with the crutches, like the two arm crutches, you know, like uh, oh, yeah. on something, something about Mary guy. Yeah. And and then like a chick who is so unattractive that you could tell this was this is like as Dave Mattel would say this this team would be called the unfuckables you know it was like the bad just a bunch of gross unattractive traditionally unattractive people hanging out and they had a bone to pick with the comic so they just kept fucking with me and eventually I just snapped I snapped because 
you know, you're kind of like, look, I'm having a decent set. The place has barely got any people in it. Uh, just, just ride it out. Don't worry about them. But they kept, it was like a gnat where they kept saying little things and they're on the front row. So only I could hear it and no people, nobody in the back knew. So I just snap on this, this table of just like, you're all gross. Nobody wants to fuck you. And it got so bad. And this has never happened to me before or since, but this guy in the back goes, Hey, lay off them. And I'm like, fuck you. They're heckling me. And I lost it on him now. Cause I'm like, well, you're defending them. They're the bad guys. What are you doing? And he goes, I brought 10 people here to see you. I saw you on Conan. I was a fan. And now I hate you and we're all leaving. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You're a, you're a fan or a supposed fan and you brought 10 people and now you're leaving because I'm heckling someone who's heckling the guy you like. And I just, I just broke this whole thing down. I was like, do you see how crazy this is? And it just got so weird and Shakespearean and tangled that they, now, now 10 people are leaving and the fat guy stands up and I thought he was going to come at me. And I was like, you fucking bitch, you virgin. Like, I'm not a tough guy, but I, I was like, I can take this guy. This guy is fat as shit. He's never been in a fight in his life. I can take him. And I was ready. I was so keyed up. So now I got 10 people leaving. I got a fat guy in the front row, just like, like chest to the stage or like waist to the stage, like yelling up at me. And I'm yelling down at him. And then his dumb skank ladies or, or ugly whores are yelling at me. So I'm yelling at them. And now this guy's leaving. The manager's in the back talking to people, trying to keep, keep him here. And then the whole thing just went off the rails and everybody left. You like incited a riot. I kind of did. But I mean, I lost it on this guy because he just kept going. And the guy, def the guy defended the fat guy. It was insane. But I, I mean, I, I felt like so alone up there for the first time you know like you as, as a comic you're very alone but i felt incredibly alone because the, the entire crowd turned on me i mean some people were just like this is crazy this is fun to watch but no it felt like the whole crowd hated me and my back's against the wall and i'm the only guy yelling back at them it was wild it was a wild scene i did a set at the cellar once great set and this guy comes up to me in a business suit and he was like hey uh that was a great set. I was wondering, you, you got like some edge to your humor. You got some darkness. I was wondering if you'd come to my, come upstate or come to Long Island and roast a bunch of my hedge fund people. And I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, I'll give you five grand. I was like, oh my God, five grand. I'll do anything for five grand. So he's like, all right, give me your email. We'll connect. And I'm like, all right. He sent me a rap sheet of dirt on the, all the clients. And this was like heavy stuff. And he kept being like, be brutal, be harsh. Don't hold back. Like, they can take it, whatever. And I'm like, all right, all right. So, I mean, this was heavy stuff. Like, this guy's cheating on his wife. This guy's addicted to blow. This guy's uh, secretly gay or in the closet or whatever. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to fucking rip this room apart. I got the best dirt. So, I uh, get the address. It's at a golf course in Long Island. This is like heavy-duty, rich people, Epstein shit. These are rich, rich Manhattanites or whatever. Yeah. So, I get on the train. I, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I got my notes. I got my piece of paper. I'm all ready. I got my cue cards. So I show up and it's just like the, the, the parking lot is like Ferrari, Beamer, Lexus, Maserati, you know, Lamborghini. It's Porsche. It's crazy. So I'm like, wow, this is uh, some high end stuff here. I get in there. It's, it's, a, it's like the banquet room of a golf club. And it's you know, white tablecloths, like all these, the, the waiters have white jackets and they got the, the cloth over the arm and the, the metal tray and the whole thing. And I'm like, oh my God. So I find the guy and it's out of a movie sitting in the back patio, smoking a big stogie. And he's like, oh, you're here. He's got that ascot going. Like the whole thing was crazy. So I was like, oh, hey, he's like, hey, you got your stuff. This is going to be so fun. Like, let him have it. Let it rip. Don't hold back. I was like, you got it. So he's like, I'm going to go up to the podium. I'm going to do a few minutes, you know, thank everybody for coming, a little house cleaning, and then you come up and do your thing. And I'm going to give you a whole 45 minutes. I was like, all right, you got it. And I go up and I just go right into it. I go, hey, where's, where's Bob at? Where's Bob? And it starts off very friendly where everybody's like, Bobby, Bobby. You know, one guy gets him in a headlock, you know, Bobby's over here. And Bobby puts his hand up. He's all nervous. And, I, and then it's, it's at this point I realize everyone there has children with them. Like the kids are there. Not everyone, but there was a couple people with kids, and I was like, well, that's weird, but yeah, yeah, you know what? I got my stuff. I was told not to hold back. Here it comes. So, And their wives are there, too. So I'm like, all right. I go, hey, Bob, we all know you're addicted to Coke. Yeah, everybody knows you do it at the office. You got a problem. You need rehab. 
nah, you can't fool us. And it, it just silence. And he's like, oh, no, no, you know, no. And like some other guy's like, I knew it. And I was like, all right, well, let me change it up. So I go, hey, hey, Reggie, hey, Reggie, we all know you're cheating on your wife. And she was, she was there. She was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it in front of our kids. Ah, how dare you? You know, she gets up, throws the napkin at him. He's like, no, no, honey, I swear to God, I swear to God. I mean, the whole thing's bananas. So then I go, uh, all right, well, let me move on again. This is, this is try number three. Hey, Cliff. Hey, Cliffy. And Cliff's like, oh, fuck. I mean, he's terrified now. And Cliff's like, I'm like, hey, Cliff, we all know you're gay. Just come out already. Nobody cares, you big homo. Ah! And he's like, oh, my God. Ah! And he's like, don't do this to me in my whole life. But, all you know, so, so basically the whole place is in shambles. Napkins are flying up. Tables are getting turned over. Fist fights. Drinks are spilled. You know, women are screaming. Babies are crying. And, uh. I go, well, I'll just go into my act, you know? So I go into my act. I'm like, Uber's weird. You guys ever take Uber? Ah, uh, bananas, hard to peel. Ah, uh, you guys ever get a haircut? You know, and it's just silence, just fighting and anger. And eventually the guy's doing this in the back, like, get off, get off. I walk up and he does the thing where he's like, what happened out there? That was awful. They hated you. Oh my God, you know how much fucking work I'm going to do to clean up that mess, you piece of shit. And I'm like, you told me not to hold back. And that was my first lesson in when they say don't hold back, that doesn't mean it. They're full of shit. So it's funny that that that. how much people think they know about comedy when they're booking comedy. It's I know. Like, you know, did you ever get this like at a club? It's like, hey, could you tell him it's his birthday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Applebee's, you know? I know. I still get that. I still get that shit. It's crazy. It's, it's, beyond it beyond it's beyond me how much people don't know about comedy like you would never go up to a guy at, at hamilton and be like hey tell me it's my birthday and the guy's like i'm supposed to be aaron burr you cunt get out of here when you have that experience of someone coming after you either during a show after a show how do you you know there's part of you that wants to just unload but you kind of got to be a little bit reserved cause you can't yes snap and lose the whole thing how do you go through that for you? What is your process of like dealing with this one issue and trying to get back to either a good evening, a good show or a second show? I think uh, I've been, it's happened to me so much that I just kind of go to a happy place. And I, I used to try to reason with them, which is the worst thing you can do. Cause they're, these are like, I guess for back, lack of a better term, these are Karens, you yeah. know, these are just like older white women who want to yell at somebody. But uh, I used to be like, no, no, I'm, ma'am, I'm a comedian. It's Joe. I didn't shoot anybody. Like, these are words. We're all going to die one day. This is crazy, you know. But uh, now I just go, I know, you're right. I know, it's crazy, huh? That, that was a mistake. I'll never do it again. I've learned a lesson thanks to you. You have changed me. You're right. Because I just want to end the fucking thing. And then she can go back to her dumb cats and go, ah, yeah, I, I showed him. I taught a guy a lesson tonight. Right. You know, and then she'll die alone. But either way, just just suck it up and move on.